Videos like this are made possible by the generous support of patrons like Hendrik. Thanks Hendrik. Hello Penguinauts, I'm the Beardy Penguin and welcome back to For All Kerbal Kind, kicking off today's episode with a reverse time-lapse build of the KIG-25, based of course on the infamous MiG-25 Foxbat. Now, of course, builds of these kinds of accurate aircraft are not as rapid and painless as this reverse time-lapse, the illusion of which is a little broken by those Kerbals walking backwards in the background. If you want to see me designing this aircraft in painstaking real time, I did stream most of it. I kind of lost my mind spending over an hour designing those front air intakes there to get them to look just right, but I'm pretty proud of the final product that you are seeing come together here. The MiG-25 was primarily designed to intercept the XB-70 Valkyrie. It's pretty infamously constructed out of steel predominantly, which makes it incredibly heavy, but also very cheap to manufacture. And that's pretty well reflected here as we're able to churn this thing out in a couple of days for really not much cost whatsoever. In fact, the cost is so low, it was much cheaper to just not even tool the aircraft. We're only going to be building one of these things, provided we don't fly it into the ground. And so it really wasn't particularly cost effective to even make toolings for the parts. In For All Kerbal Kind, our justification for building this particular aircraft actually comes from our 1967 military contract, which was to develop the capability to intercept the SR-71, that pesky aircraft, the blue Pogoda one out of the sky in the previous year. We are cutting it a little fine with the end of 1967 rapidly approaching, but we're going to just about be able to squeeze the first flight into December. Just heading over to Mission Control to grab ourselves an X-Planes contract here. It only pays us 9,000 funds, even at 265% value. <laughs> Might just about pay for the fuel. And we see a pretty funny contract here to send a new crew to Skylab as it's currently uncrewed. Well, we may well be doing that in the next episode, but we won't be completing that contract, as tempting as it is, because we can't actually dock with the space station, which is unfortunately a requirement. Now we head over to Plisetsk, where we tend to test our experimental aircraft with Andre Kerman at the controls, who took over from Raphael after he retired from flying spy planes over Western Europe. The aircraft is so fresh off the production line, we didn't even have time to paint the stars on the wings. Definitely not because I just forgot to put them on. Powered by two R-15 turbojets, this thing climbs like a bat out of hell. It puts our Grom interceptor powered by its measly S-155 rocket engine to shame. Of course, this can't climb quite so high, but my goodness, can it climb quickly and rapidly accelerate up to Mach 2.8. Any higher? And the engines do have a tendency to overheat and explode, so we are just going to coast for this initial shakedown at a little over Mach 1. I did actually test accelerating up to Mach 3 in simulations, and I can confirm the engines do in fact melt and explode at those speeds. The MiG-25 is really a favorite of mine when it comes to aerospace engineering, not because it's particularly elegant, but just in that it was designed to solve a particular problem, and it did that. The problem was to intercept high-speed, high-altitude bombers across the vast airspace of the Soviet Union, which means you need something that can climb really quickly and is really cheap to mass-produce, and it achieved both of those goals spectacularly. 
Yes, it wasn't particularly maneuverable, but it didn't need to be. As an aerospace engineer, I just love how brute forced the solution is. All engineering is compromised, and I think most Soviet aerospace projects exemplify that. It's really just two Tupolev 121 cruise missiles with some wings and a cockpit bolted onto it. It's a minor miracle the aircraft was as successful as it was. You can see we've completed our X-Planes contract and now we're just pushing our velocity a little higher to complete our supersonic flight experiment. Now we can't quite finish it on this flight, we already had a bit of data from our previous Grom flights, but with one more flight in the next episode we should be able to finalise that experiment with me having actually finally fixed the cockpit science experiments in the mod pack. They were previously providing thousands of science, which uh, required a little bit of tweaking to the Earth science reward parameters to resolve. We should also be able to easily complete the Mach 2 flight experiment as well, though this obviously won't be able to get up to hypersonic speeds or high enough altitudes to complete the hypersonic flight and high altitude flight experiments respectively, that we maybe could do the new reconnaissance photography experiment that I added in the latest update to the mod pack. The MiG-25 was actually refitted as a reconnaissance aircraft, but Beardy I hear you cry, could it intercept the SR-71? Well the short answer to that is no, definitely not. <laughs> not entirely because of the aircraft, mainly because the missiles and the missile guidance systems were simply not sophisticated enough. Yes, it can theoretically reach similar speeds, but it can only maintain them for a few minutes and even then not without suffering irreparable engine damage. There's just no way it could catch up to an SR-71 traveling at over three times the speed of sound. The MiG-31 Foxhound potentially could have if the circumstances were absolutely perfect, which isn't to say it couldn't happen, you know, such circumstances do arise, like when a Nighthawk got shot down by a surface-to-air missile in Yugoslavia in 1999, but ultimately we'll never know, the Blackbird never actually did Soviet Union overflights. That's not to say that N9 won't try it in For All Kerbal Kind though, we will have to see what his response to this aircraft being deployed will be. But for now, we're just coming to a bit of a bumpy stop on the runway. Seems the Plesetsk air crews didn't clear it properly after an experimental rocket plane exploded on it or something. But we do come to a gentle stop, and we will return to Plesetsk for a few more flights of the KIG-25 with Andre in the next episode to see if we can get a little closer to that ever-elusive Mach 3 in level flight without using a rocket engine that is. We're heading back up into low earth orbit where we're rejoining Salyut 3. You may have forgotten we even launched this thing. It's actually Almaz 2 internally, a military reconnaissance satellite and it's time for those photographs to come back to earth. Not because it's actually finished the experiment, but because it's about to be made obsolete. We've unlocked the Photography 4 experiment, which allows us to transmit the photographs. Yes, a pretty revolutionary new technology, so we don't need to be returning them in canisters anymore. Not to mention also that Salyut 3 was compromised. It was visited by a CIA spy during a rescue mission which stranded the Soyuz that you saw docked to it there. So it's time to deorbit it, it's time to return its payload of ever so precious science. We're going to see Firefly, the new re-entry mod in all of its glory. It's time to do the same for Salyut 5 and 6, internally known as Almaz 3 and 4. Although we're not going to be deorbiting those, they have multiple docking ports, they don't have a docking port occupied by a Soyuz, <laughs> stopping anything else from docking to them, and so they may well be useful in future. Swapping to Salyut 5 and sending back its film capsule. You may notice that we're not visiting Salyut 2, which is Almaz 1, and that's because it was launched before we actually had access to this film return technology. We launched it in a rush to complete the first space station contract after Salyut 1 
dramatically failed to achieve that. We're going to actually have to send a mission up to the space station to retrieve that film, which I think is an ideal mission profile for a flight of the spiral space plane, so perhaps we'll see that in 1968. But we head back to the space center and gather our veritable bounty, as the manly would say, <laughs> of science and we put that immediately into accelerating our research speeds, rapidly approaching three science a day, which is crucial for unlocking the key technologies we need to land the first base on the moon ahead of the Americans. With the problems they've been having with the Cat and 5 production line, which the description of that contract earlier in the episode seemed to imply was our fault, maybe it is, a bit of Soviet sabotage, and also, of course, the lower research speeds and the fact that the US space program is basically bankrupt as usual we really have a fair shot at getting that first base on the moon and in fact we may well once we have the ur 700 operational have some short-term outposts on the surface to complete that contract and get the funding injection from that first the base is a permanent fixture but there's nothing saying that we can't deploy something like the lunar train concept visited by the lk 700 direct ascent lunar lander but that will be something for a future episode thank you very much for watching everyone i have been the bitty penguin bit of a shorter episode today just because the kig 25 took a really long time to design that tailplane took ages to get right with the fairings and everything you're probably going to see a bit more of this shorter episode more regular release schedule kind of thing i do think this model is a little more sustainable you should see a video from calvin as the chinese space agency very very soon so be sure to head over to his channel and subscribe so you don't miss that thanks for watching penguinauts i've been the bitty penguin and i'll see you all next time a massive thank you to my patrons for their generous support and an extra special thank you to the amazing steak dakota clark madzor peter Tenet, simone 67 scott milligan lady lags a lot jesse smith nx74656 olaf hammerhand jordan millwood luna nicole the fox frosty moon mr blue star con of class f22 raptor kiverix and antonator 00